welcome to January 26th, the fourth work day of the week. Bible Mac and Daniel calls it in the midst of the week, and we will call it a Wednesday of the year 2010. Well, brother, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry. A uh, year to keep your eyes on heaven, day 26 of the year 2010. At the feet of Jesus, brethren, again, I suggest you write the chapter and verses down on a pad and paper so you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure. Well, brethren, also you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as you go along. That way you can read right along with us and keep up with us as we go through this. Okay, at the feet of Jesus, and we're going to start in Revelation chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. And they laid their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, O Lord our God. Now we're in Revelation 4, and verses 10 through 11. To receive glory and honor and power. There is a debate about the meaning behind many crowns awarded to the saints. At the Bema Seat of Christ, there are some who believe that these words will be physical crowns, though most would agree that the term is figurative. I'm convinced that these crowns are simply symbolic in the degree of honor and special privileges that we will be able to given for our faithfulness in serving Christ on earth. How these privileges manifest themselves, we do not know until we get there. Based on my understanding of certain scriptures, I believe that some will be given greater degrees of responsibility than others. But I cannot know for sure. If you go to Luke chapter 19, I think you can find some of that out. It is fun to dream and speculate, though. Perhaps that is why God did not tell us to encourage us to use our imagination. But whether these crowns are liter literal or figurative, I am convinced that one particular event will literally happen as it is described in scriptures. At the end of the ceremony, we will all face the throne of Jesus prostrate ourselves before him, and lay our rewards at his feet, along with the twenty-four elders. We will come before him with tears in our eyes and joy in our heart, worshiping him in one voice and one heart. When we finally come face to face with our Redeemer, we will not be able to contain our love and appreciation we will gladly lay our crowns before the throne. There, at the feet of Jesus, will lay thousands upon thousands of precious jewels, crowns of life, righteous glory, and gold, all cast before him in a symbolic and simultaneous gesture of holy reverence. It is this kind of scene that Paul envisioned in his letter to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Because of this, God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. However you envision the day of our salvation, and whatever you believe about the form it will take, you will have to acknowledge this one truth. It will be a day like no other in the history of the world, and it will likely be typical of eternity in heaven. We are the living beings that John speaks of. It is widely held that the 24 elders represent the whole of the saints in heaven. Reflect and imagine 
how this scene might look. What crown do you hope to lay at the throne of Jesus? Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7 reads, God will declare him to be his son. Psalms chapter 2 and verse 6 reads, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Savior and regeneration. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 10, they cast their crowns before the throne. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. By doing that, brethren, you will go and see hell's fire, that Gehenna fire that Luke says that they will throw you into. Do you want to go there? Or do you want to go to see the kingdom that the Lord is making up in heaven? Brethren, Get on that narrow path. Do not listen to these traditional teachers that add or take away from the Word of God. Brethren, let's go through a couple of them. Let's turn your book over to Daniel chapter one or chapter four and verse one. And therefore hearken, O Israel. Israel is you. If you have a circumcised heart, if you love Christ, Romans 2.29 says you're part of Israel. O Israel, unto that statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for you to do them, that you may live and go and possess the land which the Lord of God your Father has given you. This land will be the earth when he comes back. Throughout the Bible it tells you that tells you that. Now verse 2 you shall not add unto the word which I command you. That's that's the Christmas, Easter, Halloween and etc. Neither shall you diminish aught from it. You don't take away God's holy days that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Brethren you know, it tells you this. If you want to go, let's take take a little bit of time and go over into uh, verse t- uh, chapter 12 and verse 32, if we can find it here in our Bibles real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 32 says, what things soever I command you, observe to do it, that thou shalt not add to nor diminish from it. Now, brethren, over in Proverbs, I know we're getting a following a long way, but Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 6. Add thou not unto his words lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Brethren, also you'll find in Revelation that liars will not go to heaven. And over in Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 and 19, I wanted to put something here from the New Testament so you don't think it's all Old Testament. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18 reads, For I testify unto every man that is hearing the words of the prophecy of this book, this book that you should have in front of you, if any man shall add to in these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. All these plagues that Egypt got. And verse 19, if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life and out of the holy city from the things that are written in this book. Does that make you shake, brethren? 
for following the tradition of men, changing the Lord's Sabbath, changing his holy days to the man's traditional holidays. Brethren, if you want to meet the Lord when he comes here on earth, Get down to your knees and repent for following the tradition of men. And while you're on your knees and ask him for this forgiveness, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that the Lord has given to you in that letter that he has sent to you that is found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. Study your Bible. Believe in it. With that, bye for now.